So there you have it. Premiership Rugby is over for the next seven weeks. It's a bit strange, isn't it? We're not used to having a break for the Six Nations, but after Gloucester beat Sale here this afternoon, it means that it's all about the Six Nations over the next, what, month and a half, almost two months, which I think is a fascinating thing for English rugby and for the Premiership. So in this video, before I get on the road and head back home, I thought I'd just round up where the division is heading into this break, because it is essentially a mini pre-season. It's not something we've seen before. It's not something that the teams have particularly had to deal with before either. And I think that makes it really interesting for the teams that this break is good for and the teams that it is bad for and how they look in seven weeks time when they get back to domestic action. So welcome back to the channel. My name's Alfie, if you haven't been here before. I appreciate you clicking on the video. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoy it enough, if you enjoy the content on the channel, then if you can like the video, that's great. If you can subscribe, that's even better. But most importantly, comment down below. What do you make of, I suppose a few different things. What do you make of where your team is at the moment? Whoever you support in the Premiership in terms of where they are, is the break a good thing for them? How do you think they're gonna capitalize on that? And what do you make of the break overall? So I might as well start here. As you can see, it's all emptied out now, but it wasn't long ago that this place was absolutely bouncing. And that has not been the case for a lot of this season. These Gloucester fans have had to put up with a lot of incredibly disappointing and quite tight, in some cases, defeats. But they finally got the victory today against a Sale Sharks team that haven't won in 2024. So where are Sale Sharks right now? Because just before Christmas, they beat Saracens at the AJ Bell. They were top of the Premiership and since then, things have not gone their way. Now in Europe, they were in an unbelievably tough pool. They had to play La Rochelle, they had to play Leinster. We can understand them losing there. But they also, I think, seem to be losing their way in the Premiership as well. I don't think it's so much the run of results as it is the performances. And Alex Anderson spoke about it a little bit afterwards, that their defence isn't clicking in the same way. The set piece isn't either. They've tried to develop the game this season because they felt they needed to after coming up short in the Premiership final last year. And he used the analogy of it's like spinning plates. And maybe that's what they're trying to do at the moment, but it's just not quite working for them. From a Gloucester point of view, first of all, I think it was a great performance, a performance that George Skivington says has been coming. If you look at the performances in the Premiership in recent games, even though the results didn't go their way. And it's a result that puts them on 22 points. They're ninth. Bristol are next on 30. Is the aim now for Gloucester, is this a platform for them and they aim for the top eight? And I know top eight in a, in a division of 10 isn't great, but given where they were, given they're on a nine game losing streak, Champions Cup qualification, that's the aim. And this gives them the platform to be able to do just that. I think so. Let's look at the rest of the division. I think Northampton, top of the pile, are so clearly the best team in England at the moment and their performance in the Champions Cup backs that up with the way in which they've gone about qualifying from that pool. So what does this seven week break do for them? Has this come at the worst time from a Northampton Saints point of view? Or actually, is this Northampton team different this year? And the break doesn't matter. They're gonna pick it up in seven weeks and they're gonna be playing a similar style of rugby, getting similar results to what they have been getting already this season. I think that's very, very possible, by the way, because as I say, I've been so impressed with Northampton. I think they've been brilliant, but you don't want to stop, do you? You want to keep going. You, need, you want to just keep getting these results going your way, because as I say, for me anyway, and many of you might disagree with me, I don't know if you would actually, I don't think it's that controversial a take. I think Northampton look comfortably the best team at the moment. Having said that, there are teams you can't count against. Saracens don't look amazing, but they're Saracens. And actually, do you know what? I would argue that there's the possibility this seven weeks works best for Saracens because they are a team that have been there and done it before. And they've been really good previously of making it a short term project. This is what we need to do. We've got pre-season now and when we come back it's the run in for the playoffs and then we're going all the way through until we win the premiership final later on as we get closer to the summer. I think Mark McCall and those coaches and Saracens have used that sort of mentality before and I would back them to be able to do it again in particular with Owen Farrell leaving who has been the epitome of Saracens for what a decade? We're doing it for Faz and him driving that as well. I think there's every possibility, I really do. They're not perfect at the moment, but I think if I was a Saracens fan, I would be confident, I would trust in that team 
and the squad and club there to be able to get themselves in the best place moving forward. Outside of that, you've got Bath who, I mean, bonkers game at Ashton Gate. What a game at Ashton Gate. What a win for Bristol. But Bath who are having a great season. The Champions Cup, they've had some great results and qualifying. You look at their win-loss ratio in the Premiership, it, it's not extraordinary. I would love it if they got top four, and I say that as a Bristol fan, but I would love it because of the style of rugby they have been playing. And then you've got Exeter, the team that you look at and you just think they're too youthful, they're too young to be as good as they currently are. And with Rob Baxter, always trust in Rob Baxter, that's my general approach to these sorts of things. So, who else have we got there? Sale, I suppose, are struggling, as I've said already. Gloucester, Bristol, Northampton, Exeter, Saracens. I'm sure there's someone I've probably forgotten in there. But what do you all make of it? Who do you think gets top four? And how teams use this is genuinely fascinating, I think. It's not easy. A seven week break. I think it's important, by the way, because if you factor in pre-season, if you factor in the Prem Cup, which is, the teams won't say it, basically pre-season, round after round after round of the Prem, then into Champions Cup or Challenge Cup, the teams need this period. And I honestly believe it is who uses it the best in terms of getting rest, who uses it the best in getting the most out of it, are going to be the teams that we see have the biggest impact when it comes to the race for the top four when we get the other side of the Six Nations. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Who, that's a, let's do that in the comments. Who are your top four? Who do you think are going to make it? Leicester Tigers, that's the team that I, have, that I uh, haven't mentioned already. Great win against Quinns. Yeah. There's something about Leicester that you just back them to keep winning. But I, I feel like their start to the season, their poor start to the season, and this is going to come back to bite me, I think will come back to bite them. I think that poor start is ultimately going to be the reason they don't get top four. I think they're a good team. Welford Road is an incredibly difficult place to go and get a result. But I look at that start, I look at the ground that they have to make up. They have less wiggle room than some other teams. Yeah. I don't know, I think, I think it could be a tall order for Leicester, but they have the players and they probably have the game plan to be able to do it. And then Quinns, I suppose, is another team that I haven't mentioned, who, there's a lot of teams, isn't there? I, probably other than Northampton, I think there are a load of teams that on their day can beat anyone and can be really good. And if they were to get a home premiership semi-final, it would be a really tough place to go. But there's also a lot of teams that, I don't think they're that consistent. Sale are exactly that. You look at, what is it, 43-0 they lost to Exeter away from home. 36-3 they lost to Harlequins away. They came and lost here against Gloucester, who are a Gloucester team who hadn't won in nine games. Sale did lose at home to Bristol, to be fair, but they're, they're just hit and miss, I think, with Sale. They also have the capability of beating Saracens. I'll leave it there for the video. This was just a kind of set up record before I head home after this game. Premiership is done for the time being. I think it's a good thing because I think the Premiership is stronger when we have the internationals and have the England players playing. But what it gives us is a challenge that the teams have to overcome that is incredibly unique and incredibly fascinating to who does it the best. That's my general thoughts. I look forward to reading your comments. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the Six Nations. I'll see you in the next one.